Bob, you're embarrassing me, but anyway. Um, so we're here to talk about the ADC uh, mechanical system. I'm a mechanical engineer, so I'm going to get into that. And um, it's, it is an interesting system, and, and I, I do, I'm supposed to go fast because we're behind, but then again, if you want to ask a question, go ahead. <laughs> so um, I don't know if there was an introduction, Bob, to ADC and, and what you guys are trying to do. The, the data center, um, and those of you who are going to go on the tour are going to see it, it's, it's a former uh, airplane hangar right near the, uh, the runway and a, a big, uh, big building. Um, and it, these are a couple slides that Bob put together. And, and the whole question comes, why Sacramento? Because you know, a lot of us from Silicon Valley, that's where it's all happening. But um, Sacramento does have a lot of advantages. Um, this, air, this particular site is seismically neutral compared to the Bay Area. It's outside of the 500-year floodplain. Um, it's right off of Highway 80, not far from here. And it is commuting distance in a major transportation hub. And then uh, there's a lot of telecom facilities and carriers in the area. And uh, one thing, big advantage of being in Sacramento, low cost power, right? And uh, the cost of power with Sacramento Municipal Utility District, District SMUD, is substantially lower than PG&E. Um, there's a lot of reason for that. I'll, I, I don't quite know, but there, it's there. Um, so the, uh, the site has a, um, these are the existing buildings on the left here, and those are the ones that are being uh, renovated and set up for the new data center and their space used to be tarmac for uh, airplanes um, for a future uh, growth data center. And then uh, switch electrical transformer station and central plant and uh, expansion for central plant as well. So there's a lot of space out on this site when you go there. And the first uh, the first part of it's being called the Green One facility, and that's 150,000 square feet. Uh, we did go through this LEED pre-certification under the Core and Shell program with LEED, so it's pre-certified as a LEED uh, platinum level thing. So the, the goals uh, for the project um, when we came on as a design team, were uh, uh, fairly normal in that we wanted a, three, a tier three design. It needed to be reliable. It needed to be simple, easy to maintain. These are all straightforward uh, goals that we, we see a lot of projects and flexibility and scale up. But we also um, were asked to design a very energy efficient, water efficient, and lead platinum facility. And, and um, the platinum obviously relates a little bit to marketing, but the, the water and more so the energy relates to the, the running costs of this facility. So if you get the energy costs way down, there's a big benefit not only to ADC, but to the folks who are gonna be putting their servers in this building, right? So that, that was, um, energy efficiency is good from a, you know the green perspective, but it was much more for this project, a bottom line goal. So um, they, they when they got into the discussion of the low QE, what it really meant for ADC was a low TCO. And um, we were going to focus on reducing the cooling factor or the amount of energy that goes to cooling. And um, we were also going to do some work on reducing the losses in the electrical system, but the major focus was the cooling side of things. Um, just as a quick background on the electrical system. I'm not an electrical engineer, but just give you a quick snapshot on this. If you've got other questions, you can ask Bob. He knows a little bit more about it. But there's two of these 69 kV feeds and a, and a 50 MBA substation. That's, that's, here's a picture of it. And uh, it is owned, the substation is owned by ADC. And uh, there's diesel generators with a flywheel UPS system. Um, as a basic overview of what we ended up with on the, on the uh, cooling system was a uh, chilled water plant with cooling towers with its primary variable flow pumping and then uh, three chillers of 750 tons each for this first phase and then uh, for the, the final build out of, of the green one facility 150,000 square feet it was five units of 750 tons each and that is equivalent to in the 225 to 250 watts per square foot range. 
And then um, we did end up using a, a fan array, 144 fans in this first phase, and then set up with the air side economizer. So you can use outside air cooling. I'll explain how that, that's set up. Um, we'll also, it, it's also going to be set up with a water side economizer so that uh, for customers who come in and want liquid cooling at the rack level, that's going to be available. Not all servers in the future are going to be air cooled. Um, so they'll, there, there is the ability to adapt to that. And we are going to be doing on the air side hot aisle containment. Okay. So uh, this is a diagram of how the system is set up to work in the economizer mode. What we did was we took a, one of the long sides of the building and um, hooked it up with louvers. And this part's built. The, the fan wall part is not built yet, but the, there's the louvers and there'll be filters and dampers and the outside air comes in and then goes through another bank of filters and if it needs a little supplemental cooling, there's some cooling coils and then goes through the fans which then pressurize the whole space. In essence, the whole space is your cold aisle. And then the air goes through the servers and into <coughs> an isolated or contained hot aisle. And the hot air comes up into the exhaust or return air plenum. And in the economizer mode, we exhaust the hot air out. In the recirculation mode, um, that meaning when it's really hot outside and it doesn't make sense to economize, um, what will happen is that hot air will come back and, and recirculate and go over the cooling coils and get cooled from the cooling coils, right? And this will be, there'll be a mixing that goes on of partial return and partial outside air when the outside air temperatures are cold. You wouldn't want to fill up your data center with 30 degree air, right? That wouldn't make sense. So on the days when it's really cool outside, we'll mix the outside air with the return air to get the target temperature, supply temperature of 70 degrees, right? And that's the, the target. A little bit conservative, not going all the way. In ASHRAE saying you can go up to 80 degrees. We're trying to be a little bit conservative. It gives us a little bit of leeway and a safety factor there. And also we want to avoid that thing of the fans ramping up and, and uh, eating into the, the energy savings, the fans and the servers, that is. So there was an interesting uh, article that was uh, written in the Sacramento Bee, and uh, this is how the, the artists in the newspaper put together a diagram of the system. It's actually pretty nice. So the non-engineer gets it. So uh, there, you can uh, look at this article online. There's a long article about you know, what what the, the whole uh, program's about uh, in a non-technical way. Uh, but again, they're, 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 this diagram is trying to show the enclosed hot aisles <coughs> and the air going up the hot aisle enclosure to this uh, return or exhaust <coughs> hot air plenum and for the exhaust fans. Okay. So uh, this is a photograph of the, the long side of the building that was uh, built out with the louvers. So you can see when you do an air side economizer, and this is one of the tricky things about air side economizers is that not all buildings can accommodate a full wall of louvers like this, right? So if you had a data center that was in a building that uh, was right next to a, another building was just a foot away, there wouldn't be enough space to bring the air in. Or if the data center is in the center of the building and surrounded by office space, that again, you have a little bit of a problem there. But this building was just perfect and ideal. There was a long wall sitting there. The, the next building will be built about 15 or 20 feet away from it, so there'll be this space, and the, the, the next building will also have louvers on it. So there'll be this wide open space that the air can come in and go through the louvers. Yeah? So you have that 144 fan. What's the max CFM air flow rate, including N plus whatever fans? Uh, don't know the answer to that. It's something in the range on the full build out of a million CFM, plus or minus, but I can get you the, the exact number. Yeah, it's just interesting because the variable fan yeah, well, um, you will have a problem. And it, the problem would occur that if we have more flow than what's needed for cooling, that we'll have a lower temperature difference than what we 